um, to the North Yorkshire Safeguarding Children Partnership Developing, Developments and Safeguarding Masterclass for September 2023. Um, today we're going to be looking at supporting children and young people's social and emotional mental health um, and I'm really pleased to say that we are being joined by Emma Lonsdale, Lonsdale and Lorna Galdus um, who are going to be presenting um, today. So just to run through a little bit of housekeeping for the session um obviously cameras and environmental noise off in the background um we will be recording um the sessions so that will be available on our youtube um channel after the session and slides will be available to partners as well um if you do have any questions um, i know emma and lona are going to make sure that their emails are available so you can always email those through um either during the session or after the session so I'm going to hand over now if I'm going to stop sharing. So Emma, if you want to present your screen, please. Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, my name's Emma Lonsdale. I'm Head of Public Health for Children, Young People and Families within North Yorkshire Council. Um, I'd like to introduce um, my colleague, Lana. Thanks, Emma. Hi, everybody. My name's Lana Galdus. I'm a Children's Commissioning Manager in the NHS in Humber and North Yorkshire ICB. During the session, we're just going to have um, a look at some of the context around um, the emotional wellbeing system for children and young people in, in North Yorkshire. I want to raise awareness of the iThrive um, framework. Lana's going to take a look at our mini marketplace um, flipbook and go through some of the additional resources that are held on the GoTo website unashamedly a big promotion of the, the go to website. So I hope after you've you've listened to the session, everybody will go um, and have a look at that for us. So I'm sure um, people will have heard, um, whether that by through the media or by your own experiences, that we're currently experiencing an unprecedented demand within the system. The emotional wellbeing offer for North Yorkshire um, has never been under this much pressure. The demand um, in terms of um, referrals and um, interventions has significantly increased, despite us having increased our offer. You'll hear more about the offer through um, the marketplace. And we've also um, worked hard to develop resources to improve communication. The aim is that children and young people get to the right service for the first time, in order to reduce that duplication pressure that's a risk within the system. So the Thrive framework, not to be confused with the Thrive approach, which I know is, is available in some of our primary schools um, locally. The I Thrive um, approach is an approach for system change that was introduced um, some time ago now and North Yorkshire have made a commitment to adopt the framework across the system with the aim to produce a common language that's understood by all of the children and young people's workforce and by children and young people and families themselves. That provides us with um, a commitment to developing a needs-led approach. I think we often hear that children and young people feel frustrated by some of the barriers to accessing services, that the system is confusing, that they feel the thresholds are sometimes difficult to reach. We want to promote a much more early intervention approach and indeed a prevention approach. So this, this particular system framework helps us to do that. There are um, a clear description of the, the groupings within the Thrive Framework, which you can see here on the doorknot, which looks at getting advice, getting help, getting more help, getting risk support, and in the middle, thriving, which is, is really um, important. And then there's a, a key description of what the input might be offered by services underneath that, um, or, or not just services, by the community. And getting advice talks about signposting, Getting help talks about a much more of an inter intervention approach, which has um, maybe a goals based um, approach towards that. Getting more help would be a much longer, more extensive treatment process and risk support would involve 
those particularly young people who are maybe in, in crisis at that point or need their risks managing but are unable to access a particular service at that point. So we're just going to talk a little bit more about them um, in detail, but it's important to know that there is a real distinction between what is advice and support and what is actual evidence based treatment. Um, the the five needs based groups, what we've just um, looked at are very distinct. They're, they're different from one another in terms of the, the needs or the choices of the individual within each of the groups. There are a, a skill mix of professionals within there that could be from a, a youth worker providing advice and support to a clinician delivering treatment and the resources required and, and the choices, I think that one of the key principles of the um, the framework as well is around the choice that's offered and um, that it has, to, you know, it's a very much a person centred approach um, rather than fitting um, a young person to a very strict and restricted treatment pathway. Getting advice and signposting. This is is for that this part of the um, population described within the framework of around 30% of children, young people would be seeking support for their mental health and well-being within this category. And this could include advice, signposting or self-help resources. It could be a one-off contact. It could be, oh, we've got people joining us. Hi Emma, sorry to jump in. I'm just saying I think we've we've just had a link that's gone back out, so we've suddenly got people jumping in. Um, so I'll just ask partners. I'm really sorry about um, any confusion with the link that's gone out this morning. Um, if you can just pop your cameras off and your microphones on mute. Emma's just started on the on the uh, presentation. We will be recording this, so um, if you've missed the first first five minutes you can pick that up on the recording um but yeah emma i'll um do you want to just quickly introduce yourself again um and then i'll let you carry on hi everybody my name's emma lonsdale i'm head of public health for children young people and people and families at north yorkshire and part of my portfolio is supporting um improvement around the emotional health and well-being system uh, my colleague lana Galdas um, is joined us as well. Lana, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks, Emma. Hi, everybody. I'm Lana Galdas. I'm Children's Commissioning Manager in the NHS um, for Humber and North Yorkshire ICB. OK, so Lana and I are doing a bit of a double act. We will um, be, be swapping over um, throughout the presentation. And we'd also like to encourage people to use the chat if there are any, anything that we're not addressing or any wild and wonderful questions that you want to ask about children's emotional being. Laura and I will endeavour to get to get back to you via the contact list for the session. So what just very quickly, what you've missed is I've been talking about um, the demands and pressures of the system, which if you are working directly with children and people, I'm sure that you've experienced um, as well. I've just, decided, just started to introduce um, the Thrive framework, not to be confused with the Thrive approach, which I know that um, some of our schools in North Yorkshire have adopted. So getting advice, the getting advice part of the framework is for what the framework describes around 30% of children and young people who would be seeking support for their, for their well-being and could include um, advice, signposting or self-management resources. It would include um, or could include just a one-off contact, a brief intervention, a discussion with a youth worker, a teacher in relation to their well-being and that's it. Or it could include um, a follow-up. It could also include encouraging or directly engaging parents and carers within that conversation. Um, that parents and carers have a have a key role in supporting their their own child's um, well being. We move on. 
getting help part of the framework. Um, I suppose it, it, it's easy to see that there's a, there's a, a clue in terms of the titles of, of the um, parts of the framework is this would include actual intervention and it would be an agreed in relationship between the practitioner and the child in terms of that intervention. Um, but what we don't want within a system is that children are being referred to agencies that can su provide support around their emotional well-being and the child's not willing to engage. I think we we agree here that it needs to be a focused goals based input that is provided from an evidence base of interventions. And the framework predicts that around 60% of children and young people seeking help would fit into this particular category. Getting more help would involve a more longer term intervention. It would be um, provided by much more specialist services, um, potentially a multi-agency team, and there would be um, a presentation of um, more complex mental health difficulties and can include um, crisis care and interventions. And also uh, not to forget um, those children and people with neuro neurodevelopment needs um, and eating disorders can include what some people would traditionally know um, as CAMS as well. The getting risk support element would be for those young people who potentially are in crisis, but also need support with managing the risks that they present with, but haven't been able to engage with help or have engaged with help and are still in a difficult situation. This could include breakdown of educational placement, risks um, around youth justice, and looked after children. And as with getting more help, would require much more of a multi-agency approach. Um, and the prediction from the framework is that around 5% of children and young people would be um, included within this particular part of the framework. Thriving. Um, thriving represents um, a huge part of the framework and predicts that around 80%, so most of our young people will sit within the thriving category. Not to me, not not to say that they wouldn't um, potentially need help at a point in, in their life, you know, responding to stressful situations, exam time, bereavement, those sorts of things. But most of their time, they're thriving. They are able to access support when they need it. They can maintain their well-being by resilience, knowing who to speak to when they need help, um, and you know are also able to, as I say, choose who they want to engage with should should they need to. They've got awareness of where they can get support. So this is the, is the framework as it as it stands all together. And the reason why I'm talking about the framework is that there has been a strategic commitment within North Yorkshire to adopt this particular framework. So as we move through the implementation of the framework, if you're working directly with young people, you might see this, these descriptions more often. You will see later on as, as Lana talks about the different resources that we've produced, we've started to attempt to use the language in some of the promotional work that we're doing around the offer of, of the system. And we hope that at different points through the implementation, we will engage you all at some point, all of the children and people's workforce in terms of being part of that, that work to adopt the framework. Thank you. I'm going to hand over to Lana now. Thanks, Emma. Um, so Emma's just um, 
hopefully those of you just joined a little bit late um because there's a technical issue we'll kind of be able to catch up on that but emma's just giving you an overview of the i thrive framework for children's mental health and then i'm going to kind of move into what are some of the practical things out there to support young people you might be working with or um if you're in an education setting or wherever you are working with young people what can you do to support those? So it might be around the getting advice or where do you um, access services for support? So I'm going to go through a number of different um, things. All of them are housed on the GoTo website, which is where I'm going to start. But I'm going to look at a, a marketplace, which is in essence, it's kind of like a directory of services and support available in North Yorkshire. So if you haven't seen this already, I'm going to briefly go through it um, with you. I'm also... I'm going to look at some uh, needs based guidance again using the i throw framework. So if you're working with a young person um, and you know uh, some of their um, presenting needs, you can work through this and you can understand um, where you might get their advice or the help or the support. And then I'm going to share some young people's resources that we develop with young people around um, how to get the advice and support that they need as well um, so that you can promote those um, wherever you are working. And then finally, I'm going to share some easy read resources for young people who might find some of the previous resources more challenging to access. So we've developed some easy read guides um, for children's um, social and emotional mental health as well. So I'm just going to share my screen because what I'm going to go to do is start with sharing the GoTo website. So hopefully everybody can see the GoTo website now. So what I'm going to do is just give you, if you haven't seen this, um, it's a great place to go. If you've seen it already, I'm hoping that I'll be able to show you a few resources that aren't here that you might, might not be aware of. So I'm going to do a bit of a walkthrough, first of all. Um, so this website was developed by young people and families and professionals in North Yorkshire a couple of years ago, specifically for children's social and emotional mental health. And um, the idea is that it has resources. We've got a section for young people, for parents and carers and professionals. The bulk of the info is in the young people section. So if you're a parent or a carer or a professional, um, the, everything in the young people section will also be re relevant. And we want to be transparent with all of that. So um, in terms of the way it's set up, um, we've got a few of the more popular pods on the front in terms of things that are in North Yorkshire, top tips on feeling good and some of the links to our socials. Um, but the first place I would recommend you start is looking at the, I'm a young person. I'm just going to really briefly walk through the different sections. So we've got a section on top tips on feeling good. So this um, provides advice and guidance on things like sleep, conversations, keeping active, um, just because it's really important. I, I, People when the young people when they developed this website with us felt like it was really important to focus on the positives as well as when they're feeling um, their mental health is not as good. We also have a, a really big section on um, coping with common issues. So you want to find out a little bit more about, let's say, um, feeling low or sad or worried about eating habits. You can click on any of these sections. I'll click on the eating habits as an example. And it provides some advice, some guidance, and it also talks about where you can get more help. So some of our services locally, um, urgent help and then some national services that provide more advice and guidance as well. Um, go back to the common issues. So you'll see um, there's lots of different sections on here that we keep adding to this with uh, feedback from young people. So things like sexual health, loneliness, uh, friendships, money. Um, jobs and careers so that's a really great place to start as well we also have a section on getting support you need so um this provides some information on different services available so some of it is that advice and guidance and some of it is how to get support from more specialist service so we have things like the healthy child program compass phoenix and cams in there and again lots of links to national websites that can support as well and i'm going to talk through some of those services in a moment when we'll look at the marketplace What's in North Yorkshire for me again, I won't go th through this in detail because this provides similar link links to the previous page. We also have a page on staying safe and that provides information on staying safe, on safe online, um, exploitation and a number of other areas. Um, we have a section on getting involved. So um, we have uh, young people who can be champions of the website. And um, so if you're working with young people that might be interested in that, it could be great if a young person's had an experience of um, mental uh, health that they want to talk about um, and write a blog. It's a great opportunity. And then finally, the easy read version, which I'm going to come to shortly. 
So I won't go through the parent and carer professional sections, um, but I would recommend you come and do that. You can also search the website for a keyword if there's a particular topic you want to look at. But what I'm going to do is look on um, these resources here. I'm going to start with the mini marketplace, which is hyperlinked on our main page. So this is, in essence, um, a directory of support and services. It's not exhaustive, but it hopefully is a great place to start. So you work through it like a book, really. Um, and in, as Emma talked about, it links with the FIRE framework. So it starts with getting advice, which is the green section, and it works through to getting help, getting more help and getting risk support. And each page, hopefully you can see it. Oh, that's gone too big. Has a similar format, so it outlines who the service supports, what the service offers, where it's offered and any eligibility criteria. So if you're working with a particular age group of young people, you might want to check um, some of the sections around eligibility and age. So um, I won't go through each page in detail, but what I will do is kind of show you the format. So, for example, in the green section, which is the getting advice, we have things like Recovery College Online, which provides lots of educational resources for young people, but also for uh, adults, so parents and carers. Uh, and it's completely free and, and it's focused specifically on, on mental health and well-being. Um, in, if you uh, work or live in Craven, we have Cooth, which is an advice um, and a digital platform for young people. Um, we have training offers, so there's the Solihull training programme um, through North Yorkshire Council, Compass Phoenix are one of our early intervention services and they have lots of training support. We also have a text messaging service for young people and every service that's available, we have the contact details here. So if you're not sure, you want to make an inquiry, you can contact um, the service directly. So then moving on into the blue section, which is the getting help section. So um, if you're working with a young person, you've, you've worked on the getting advice, you've maybe looked at some resources together and um, signposted to, let's say, some websites, information. Actually, if you like more direct intervention might be required. Some of the services available in North Yorkshire are listed in this book. So we have Compass Phoenix who provide direct um, evidence based interventions. Some of that is group work. Um, for young people aged from 9 to 19, we have the Sleep Charity, which provides some practitioner support. Um, we have some of our schools in North Yorkshire, not all of them have something called Wellbeing in Mind teams, which are based in secondary schools and the list of the schools they're in there. And they can be accessed for, um, they provide a whole school approach support for schools, they provide consultation and signposting for staff, and they also provide some um, psychological interventions, uh, both group and one to one. So I'll keep moving through this um, in terms of the format it remains the same. The Healthy Child Programme also provides some um, advice and supports for six to 19 year olds. There are SEND hubs available, also provide support around children's mental health. And then we move into the getting more help, which is those who need more goal based and more extensive support. So um, we've got the early help teams and all of those are listed across North Yorkshire. We can contact them. Um, moving into specialist CAM services, so depending on where you work, Craven have um, a slightly different provider um, to the rest of North Yorkshire. So for the majority of your North Yorkshire, the provider is uh, Tees, Esk and Weir Valley and all the contact details are here. So they cover things like eating disorders, specialist CAM services, and they also have a crisis service available 24-7. Um, and then if you live in Craven, it's uh, the same offer, a very similar offer, but a different provider called Bradford Care um, Trust. So I'll keep moving through these and I just recommend you come back and look a little bit more detail. And what we also have is that we know our services are pressured um, and you may experience wait times if you're referred into one of those special services. And um, so we also promote the voluntary sector, which provide a really great um, variety of services across North Yorkshire. So um, depending on where you live or work, some of these might be slightly different. But some of these, for example, Wellspring based in Harrogate, provide some virtual support and um, a counselling service for young people at a low cost as well. Um, so again, you can look at these in more detail, but we have things like art therapies, North Yorkshire Sport, who provide um, some mental health and wellbeing um, support for young people. Um, the Sidewalk, which is a youth project, carers resource for young, young carers. So lots and lots of different um, support available. So um, 
I would definitely recommend you have a look at the marketplace if you're looking to understand what support is available for young people. There's another um, document called the needs based guidance. So if you're kind of working with a young person and you're not exactly sure um, what support advice they might need, this is a great opportunity for you to look at it and try and work through what um, you might be seeing that young person, maybe any behaviours that you're seeing. That it's not a checklist, so we need to be really clear, but it can be a guide. So again, the presenting needs in a young person have been separated into the different um, parts of the framework. So if we use school performance, if we look at the green section, the getting advice, um, you, you want to read those different indicators. Let's say there might be some mild and temporary changes that are affecting their performance. Eating habits, there might be some mild changes in those e e eating habits, maybe occasionally missing a meal. The sleep might be slightly changed. Um, and some mild changes in, in, in behaviour, that would mean that they would fit in the getting advice or might indicate that. And then you can go down here and there will be some um, sections and hyperlinks as to what support and advice is available for th those young people. And that works its way through. So it's just a guide really to help you understand if you're working with a young person, what is the right support available for that young person and how can you help them get to that support? OK, it might not be that big on your screen. So again, I'd recommend you take it, have a look at it. Um, we keep it on here so that if it changes, we can update it, but you can print it off. But just remember to double check every now and again because things can change. And then I'm just going to click on to the easy read resources um, as a final and just open one of these so you can see. So these have been um, developed for young people who might benefit from um, we use something called widget so it might be young people with send and feedback was that actually um, this is a really important um, opportunity for young people to access that information understand how they were feeling so this one is based on uh, feeling really sad it describes um, what feeling sad might feel like um, how it can be normal to feel sad sometimes and how you might benefit from talking um, to somebody um, some suggestions for things they might do if they feel sad And then also some advice on how um, a young person might contact um, some support. Some of those are national, but we've got a Compass Buzz, Buzzles text line, which is um, local. And then also um, urgent help in terms of if you're really wor worried or a young person is really worried and feels like they're in a crisis, who they can contact there. And then there's kind of at the end, there's a little bit of a, a worksheet that a young person can work through um, to kind of put in a little bit of a plan and work with an adult to do that. So I'm just going to pop back there and the, the feeling worried works through the same um, format as well. So what I'm going to do is just go back to the home page because um, I feel like there might have been some questions from that. I'm just going to stop sharing and just ask if there's um, an opportunity to pause and see if anybody's got any questions that they want to pop in the chat. Anna, um, thank you for your question. So you've asked, can children in other counties access the support? It probably depends on what support it is. In terms of um, anything that's online, all of the web-based um, resources, like for example, on the go-to, that can be accessed by anybody, although it is North Yorkshire specific. Usually, if it's a health-funded service, um, so let's say Compass Phoenix or... Um, specialist CAMs that's usually based on where a young person lives or their GP or the school that they're attending. Um, so um, if a young person is out county but is coming into a school then they may be able to access some of those services but each of the services uh, often operates slightly differently so usually a good indicator is if the young person lives or the GP is based in North Yorkshire. Does that answer your question Hannah if it doesn't just uh, ask something in addition. Um, and then Sam, other services mainly aimed at certain age groups. Are there any for 16 plus? Yes, there are. So um, most of our services um, commissioned um, in terms of direct support service go up to 19. Um, and some of them go a little bit older than that um, for young people with special education needs and, and disabilities. Um, most of our services start well compass starts at nine cam starts from from five usually so from school age so most of our services for school age young people um 
and go up to usually 19 and sometimes um, 25. Does that help, Sam? Were you thinking about, um, if you're thinking about anything in specific, any specific services, just let me know. Sorry, just to add, all of that is described within the Marketplace booklet. Yeah. So please, please do go and have a look after the session or, or when you get some free time, just have an explore of the site. Thanks, Emma. Yeah, that's a good point. We tried to put like eligibility criteria, which includes um, age in there as well. I've just put a link for the, go for the go to as well into the chat as well. So you can go on that and see all the resources we've just been talking about. Are there any other questions or comments or anything? It has, is this useful? Is there anything more people were hoping from the session? Yeah, anything wild and wonderful just just go ahead please <laughs> so i'm not seeing any more questions i'm glad it's useful i think what i would just ask is that we've had this website the go to and some of the resources available for a couple of years now and we're still finding it it's not getting out there so whatever networks you have um, with young people families professionals please share that there was lots and lots on there and so if you're working with a family or a young person um please signpost them to the go to at at first, uh, include any newsletters or anything that you um you, you kind of use. And uh, someone's just said thank you for sharing it with your families every week in the newsletter. That's really great. Um, and we also will take any feedback on the website. So if you're thinking there's something missing from that or you would like some more resources, um, just give us a shout because we can try and um, we do try and keep the website updated. We work with colleagues in comms to try and improve it. So um, we're always interested in things that you think would be helpful. So please get in touch with us after the session if you think there's something you want to share. OK, I think I don't think there's any more questions. Uh, Emma, did you want to say anything before we finish? No, not at all. OK, all right. So I think um, thank you, everybody, for giving up your time. I know probably everybody's got a very, very busy week and a very busy day. What what Emma and I will do is stay on. If anybody wanted to ask any questions, but you didn't want to ask it to the group, you can just um, catch us at the end. Um, and if not, thank you for your time. I'm sorry if you missed the beginning of the session, but that will be um, shared via a recording. Thank you so much, Lorna and Emma. Um, I'm very aware that the sun is shining and there's, I'm sure there's lots of you who are wanting to get out and have a good little bit of a dose of vitamin D over your lunch break. Um, we do have a couple of very quick um, partnership updates for you. You'll just take a couple of minutes at the end and then you'll, uh, you'll be finished in the next couple of minutes. But just to make you aware, all our masterclasses are record, recorded um, and the slides and recordings are available on the website. We also make them available on our YouTube channel. So if you want to um, like and subscribe, you'll get any notifications that come up for that. And then following the course, please do complete the post course questionnaire on NYES and you'll obtain your um, certificate of attendance. Once again, apologies. I know there was a little bit of confusion with the link at the start. Um, so the, the first few minutes of, of introduction and, and Emma introducing the model um, will be available on the recording. Um, so in terms of um, partnership updates, um, I'm sure you're aware that all of our procedures, guidance and one minute guides are available um, on the website under the um, professional section. The only real one that's been sort of updated over the summer months is the submitting a referral to NRM for a child. For those of you who don't know, NRM is our national referral mechanism, um, which is a framework for identification of victims of modern slavery and ensuring that that appropriate support is received. Now, no significant changes to processes. Um, there was just some slight uh, changes to some of the threshold guidance in relation to reasonable grounds. So please do have a look at that if you've got any questions in relation to uh, modern slavery and submission of an NRM. Um, in relation to our monthly e-bulletin, you may have noticed over August and September, we've had a slight change to um, some of our bulletin structure. Um, we tend to start with a headline now, which is around do your part, which links to practice and research themes. So it's 
it's basically a like I say a headline something that you can do as a as a professional um one key point that you can pick out of the bulletin um so for example in the august one which may be useful following on um from what emma and, and lorna have said we actually highlighted how you can bookmark um key resources onto your um, phone or mobile device um it's a really key one so things like the mini marketplace you can actually bookmark and have it saved on your phone so you can um access things really quickly so if you want to look at that you can go back onto um obviously past um episodes or um and you can have a look at some of the information in, rela in relation to social media, you'll see that our um, YouTube channel has been developed and branded. We hit the magic number of over 100 subscribers, um, which means that we can now kind of brand it under the MYSCP um, link. So much easier to find, much easier to share. And we've got a slightly new logo now. Um, so again, please do um, like it, subscribe, promote. Um, there's some really useful short clips on there as well. And then just following on from that, um, in relation to our e-bulletins, um, we're aware that those go through on a monthly email, but what we've also started to do now is do a really short video um, podcast, which we've got on our Spotify uh, channel, but also on YouTube. So it takes about 10 minutes, but we go through some of those key learning headlines. So it's just another way of accessing that information, again, while you're sat and having your cup of tea or out in the car or something like that. Finally, from me, just in relation to some upcoming masterclasses, um, in September, later on in the month, we've got Making a Good Referral through to Early Help. October, we've got our Reducing Parental Conflict Masterclass and an Early Years Evening Masterclass in October as well. 8th of November, we have a Drink Drive Campaign and Safeguarding Message Masterclass. Um, and in December, a Modern Slavery Awareness and the NRM. So a lot more information around that NRM process for you. January, um, you'll be hearing a lot more from me. I'll be doing the multi-agency child exploitation updates. And then in February, we've got learning from our LADO cases. So as always, more information about all available training, visit our website. Um, and again, as we always say, if you've got any gaps or any training knowledge that you would like us to look into or address in an upcoming masterclass, please do get in touch. Um, and finally, our key links. Um, hopefully you all know our website now, but obviously we've got our Twitter, uh, Facebook, YouTube and Spotify on there as well. Um, so, yes, many thanks, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your uh, afternoon. Hopefully you get a little bit of sunshine. I'll stick around just for a couple of minutes just to see if there's anything that pops into the chat. Um, but other than that, thank you very much. <laughs>